Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and self-development. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily news digests from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, as well as guided meditation programs. Between a full-time job in IT and a full-time job in podcasting, it gets harder and harder to sit down and read the books I'm interested in. This is where Audible comes in. I can listen on my daily commute, relaxing, or while out running errands and still get in the books I've been wanting to get into. You can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere. The app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. Now you can try Audible risk-free with a special 30-day free trial by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash nerdery and murdery. That's audibletrial.com forward slash nerdery and murdery. Don't let your busy life get in the way of that great book you've been wanting to read. Go get your free trial of Audible today. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. This is Jeffrey, and we've talked about many times before that I experience problems and struggles with my mental health. And really, without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy does work. It's helped for me. But but what is is, is therapy exactly? It's it's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work or you're not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's really time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles. And, and it's time to start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. So join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. And there's a special offer to Nerdery and Murdery listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash nerdery and murdery. That's betterhelp.com forward slash nerdery and murdery. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Hey, you remember when uh, one toy company owned the toy market between about 1979 and about 1983? Yeah, sure. that, we're going to talk about those guys today. Awesome. No, I don't remember that at all. Welcome to episode 140 of Nerdery Murdery. Big 140. I'm Zig with your Nerdery. And I'm Jeffrey with your Murdery. Welcome to another week of the highs and lows, the ups and downs, the good and the bad, and the nerd and the murd. And we have our producer, Will, in the house. Hello. Yay. There he is. Howdy. Awesome. Can't wait for that. Um, did want to give a reminder out to our listeners. We're still compiling, combining, compiling. The funny movie list, uh, movies that make you laugh out loud, no matter how many times you watch them. Um, we have some people working on lists themselves, and we'll pick from those lists. We will watch those movies, and yes. we'll give our reviews of the fan-curated list. I had uh, one of our fans, uh, Paul, who we've talked about before, uh, ping me last night. He said, man, this list is harder than I thought. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it is. Yeah. It looks easy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, looking forward to that. Please do send those to us. Uh, you can find um, the links to our email on our website, nerderymurdery.com. Yes. We'll mention it at the end of the show. Uh, you can also find us at Nerdery Murdery on Facebook if you want to join that group. Mm -hmm. And you can message us there as well. So anyway, anyway, you can get that those those uh, those movie lists to us. We appreciate it because we are going to do an episode yep. on that of the fan curated uh, just to get your yours in there as well. Yep. You can even uh, uh, on the episodes, you can even comment on YouTube and we get that as well. So, yeah, I go check that every once in a while. But, but a nice, 
interesting conversation about the about a film the other day with somebody just at random. We just we just kind of nerded out over a movie. <laughs> it was awesome. Easy enough to do. Yes. Easy enough to do. Um, was also going to tell you, I uh, uh, so as as we've been going back and watching um, what's called the the Defender Marvel movies. Uh, we finished season one of Luke Cage. Um, I thought Luke Cage was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the first the first season. That's that's all we've gotten through. Um, but for me, it. It's almost like it was a two-part first episode because the the first part of it dealt mostly with Cottonmouth, and the second part dealt with Diamondback. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this about that show: number one, I felt that the episodes with Cottonmouth and the episodes with Diamondback went too long. I thought they could have shortened that season a little bit and made it a little bit better because I just felt it went too long. But what I did like about both the actors that play those two roles is they did a really, really good job in their roles because I hated them. I I hated them as characters. You're supposed to hate Cottonmouth and Diamondback. Yes, not not hating them as I dislike the show. I hated them yeah. as characters. Yes. And that and that shows a really good actor when when they make you just a deplorable human being. Um so it, so Luke Cage was good. And then we debated on whether or not we were going to do Iron Fist or not, because I'd heard so many bad reviews about Iron Fist, people that tried to get into it and just couldn't. Iron Fist was fine. I'm I'm enjoying the shit out of Iron Fist. Yeah, I thought I liked it. Yeah, I'm really liking. I'm I, I, and I'm surprised with everybody. Every, I, I, I very rarely have ever seen a good comment about Iron Fist, and and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So, so that's what we're into right now. We're 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 in the first season of Iron Fist, and then I think because we're trying to watch them in in the order you're supposed to watch them, which means according to all the lists I've read, the Defenders is next. Okay, after Iron Fist, I yeah. think yeah, that sounds right. Yeah the uh, the the list that that I've received, uh, and I'll get to it here. We should post um, that. You're supposed to watch Daredevil season one, Jessica mm-hmm. Jones season one, Daredevil season two, Luke Cage season one, then Iron Fist season one, The Defender season one, then go to The Punisher season one, Jessica Jones season two, Luke Cage season two. Iron Fist season two, Daredevil season three, Punisher season two, and Jessica Jones season three. So, okay, that's what we're in the process of, and and I can send you that list too if you want. Or, yes, yes, please, because I actually kind of like to watch it that way because it's like I keep having to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I found a couple places online that listed them in in that order. Oh, okay. Um, so that's what we're what we're doing them in. Um, uh, so. And I saw that uh, Madam Web is released, and it is getting terrible reviews. Terrible mm. reviews. I don't know. If, uh, no, let me rephrase it. I do know that's not one I'm going to see in the theaters. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll wait till it's streaming, and I'll yeah. give I'll give it a shot. Um, I'm not big into the Madam Web character. I know that she's a she's a side arc to Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, but I've never really been overly interested in that character, so I'm not as interested in the movie. So. Well, it's it, she's a she's a side art character to Spider Man and Spider Woman and everything else, you know. Yeah. It's yeah, I'm super excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. Yes. Um, oh, I loved Marvels. By the way, I, I saw Marvels. Oh yeah, streaming the other day. Yeah. Did I, you agree the, though? The musical number was out of place. I liked it, but yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, there was the story behind it as to why they were doing it that way. It's because everybody sings on that planet. That's how right. they Everybody sings on the planet. But if you uh, just talk to them, they don't understand. You. Um, yeah, they don't, they, they, they don't understand it. So, um, I just, it was good, but just out of place. And hey, look, here comes my sister. Yay! She's trying to join the audio, so we'll give her a minute. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, it it was it was just really 
the 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 musical piece was just out of place with the rest of the movie. But the rest of the movie was just fine. It it I I I thought it had a good pace to it. It wasn't long. Um the uh the the actress that plays um uh Miss Marvel is mm-hmm. is awesome. Oh yeah. Is is absolutely awesome. All right, looks like Shelly's in. Hey, hey. Shelly, can it's you a big hear old us? episode? Okay. Shelly, can you hear us okay? You're on mute. Unmute yourself. She has- Unmute. There she, there she is. There we go. Here I am. Hey, hey. Shelly. What's up? Not so, much to it. So we were we were uh, in between recording our episodes and getting everything uploaded. And she pinged me and she said, hey, brother, are you ready to Zoom? And I was like, oh, we're recording, but come on in. You can come sit with us. <laughs> Very cool. So, Very cool. So that'll be cool. Um, you know, you can feel free to comment along the way. Yes. Uh, as we go. She said she's not camera ready. So those of you watching okay. the video aren't, aren't going to see her on camera because she refused <laughs> to. Shelly, this is a face for radio. <laughs> big. I, I just woke up and I've had one cup of coffee, so you know it's safe to talk to me. But I'm not, I'm not right showing on. my face. <laughs> this is number two. Uh, I'm gonna go for number three here in a minute. So, so funny you talk about a, a face for radio. Uh, last last weekend, um, I went to a local barber shop here. I found a a, a a a local one, which I just happened to run across. I went to the UPS store to ship a package. And there was a barber shop next door. Chelsea was with me at the time. She goes, oh, I really need a haircut. Let's go into this place. And uh, so, I mean, it's a true barber shop. Oh, shave and everything? Yes. Nice. And, and, and I didn't shave need a haircut. Two bits. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't need a haircut at the time, but Ch- Chelsea did. So she went in and I, and I saw the barber pole and I'm like, do you give shaves here? And the guy's like, yeah. And so I got a, I got a straight razor shave and that was yes. awesome. But anyway, so I went back last week to get a haircut and uh, I walked in and there was a lady who was cutting hair. She said, good morning to me. And all I said was good morning. And she immediately turned to me and she goes, so besides being in the military, what did you do? I'm "I'm sorry. How did you know I was in the military? And she goes, I just know things. <laughs> and um she goes, Well, you've got a great voice. You really need to be on radio. And I said, Well, we actually have a podcast. <laughs> and I Funny you some, should say that. Yeah. <laughs> Funny you should ask. So I had some of my cards on me and uh nice. gave it to everybody in there. And they're like, Oh yeah, we need one to post here at the store too. So we've got uh, one of our cards posted at their uh at their yes. barbershop. Nice. That's pretty cool. But it's a <laughs> It, I, I'm t- when I say it's an old school barbershop, like the barbershop movies or the barbershop in Luke Cage, they've got uh-huh. an old, they've got an old guy in there. The guy's got to be 150 years old, <laughs> still cutting hair. Uh, no, he's not cutting hair. He just sits there and talks to everybody. <laughs> you know? Nice. And he was he was just sitting there talking as I was waiting, and, and he goes. Yeah, I remember that time I was trapped under a car in Florida, and Lord help me, the car just lifted off me. And it, it, it was just, just listen to his stories. It's very funny, but it is definitely an old school barbershop. Nice. Yeah. So now you're going to go back, huh? Oh, yeah. I've been a regular customer there since we, since we, since we came here. Uh, nice. You know, it's, it's a local shop. Want to, you know, help local businesses and everything like that. So, Always. so definitely keep going with that. So. So the question is, do they do petties? Yes. Hey, sibling petties. When I finally get out there to go see you again. Yeah. Yeah, they do petties there. They do massages there. Uh, and the lady that talked to me, uh, that that, you know, you know, w- w- was originally talking to me, she actually has a PhD. Wow. Uh, yeah. So um I don't remember what it was in. She she had a she had a plaque up about her PhD, and I don't remember what it, what it was in. Oh well, but yeah, yeah. P- she, she, but she likes being a barber. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jackie, oh. who we used to work with, mm-hmm. is also a, a barber mm-hmm. now. Interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. she loves it. Interesting. Well, as you know, your your mima was into hair. My mm-hmm. mom does hair. Yeah, a lot of people love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they they're also like your your local bartender. They become your psychologist sometimes. Right. Yes, <laughs> maybe that's what her PhD is. In. There Psychology. you go. 
<laughs> that would kind of go hand in hand, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's all I had. Zig, do you have anything else before we kick it off? Nope. That's that's it. That's a <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, Zig, I will let you take over with the nerdery side of the house. Woohoo! Today we're gonna talk about Kenner toys. Yay! Kenner oh, Pro I had lots of them. Kenner. Who's that? Kenner What's that? Toys. It's a, it's a toy company. They, From they, they did all the Star Wars toys. Was I born? Did hey, you William have Jurassic? Baby. He doesn't know. Did, do you have? Did you have Jurassic Park toys? I have like a new pop thing, Jurassic mm -hmm. Park pop little thing of the guy that got killed by that thing in the car, but not when I was a kid. Okay. You have Batman toys back back in the. I had GI Joes. Oh well, we'll talk about GI Joes. GI Joe was, <laughs> Joe was Hasbro. Yeah. Wow. So uh, Kenner was an American toy company founded in 1946. Throughout its history, the Kenner brand products uh, several highly recognized toys and merchandise lines, including action figures like the original series Star Wars, Jurassic Park, and Batman, as well as die-cast models. The company was closed and merged by its corporate parent, Hasbro, in 2000. So originally, uh, Kenner was founded in 1946. The Cincinnati Soap Company made this little bubble gun that they, this toy bubble gun that they sold for like 50 cents for using their soap in. Um, and they decided to divest of that product when they got bought out. And the guys that ran the little advertising toy making area uh, carved themselves out uh, from the company. They wanted to keep going. And they set up in the Kroger building. Uh, Kroger, the grocery store building mm -hmm. in Cincinnati on Kenner Street, which is where they got the name of the company. Sorry, complete side note. I it, only only tangent, tangent to tangentially. Tangent, Jensen. Is, is Kroger the parent company? Because I know that Kro that that Shelly has fries, which is a Kroger. Oh, yeah. Kroger store. got a whole bunch of stuff. I didn't know. Right. Kro I didn't know if Kroger was the parent company. Kroger bought Safeway. No, 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 not for the toy company, and not for Kenner. They no, just no, rented out a. No, I a understand. That. You just mentioned Kroger, and it just made me think because, because like I said, Shelly has fries, and the 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 fries commercials are the exact same as the Kroger's commercials. Like <laughs> Kroger owns what used to be Safeway. Everybody now got it. Well, okay. except for Albertsons. Maybe they do. I don't think <laughs> they own Albertsons. Anyway, anyway, just slightly related. <laughs> Um, so in the early sixties, um, of course, Kenner was also one of the first companies to advertise on television, uh, cause it was a new medium and it was cheap to get locally. And, uh, they introduced their corporate mascot in the early sixties, the Kenner Goonie Bird, which would be used in both its company logo. It's Kenner. It's fun. And TV ads in both animated form and puppetry. One commercial was produced by Muppets creator, Jim Henson and featured a puppet that would later become the Sesame Street character, Little Bird. Hmm. Uh, but the toy company phased out the, the Kenner Goody Bird in 1974. The company was purchased by General Mills in 1967, and in 1971, General Mills merged its Rainbow Craft division into Kenner, bringing Play-Doh into the Kenner products line. In 1985, General Mills would spin off both its Kenner and Parker, Parker Brothers toy divisions to form Kenner Parker Toys. Following year, Kenner Parker sold off its Lionel Trains division. Uh, Kinder Parker was acquired by Tonka in 1987 under Tonka Management. Kinder Products was reconstituted as a division, um, and then Tonka, including Kinder, was purchased by the toy company Hasbro in mid 1991. So, so, so Tonka, um, you know, you remember the old Tonka trucks, the big ones? Yes, yes. They were, they were big and they were fully metal. Yes, and uh, I have them in my backyard. Yes. And I was on the playground at the at the at the at the nursery, the daycare that I stayed at on uh, on the on uh, on the base at Davis Monthan in Tucson, Arizona. And I was in the sandbox and who knows what I did. I probably know, knowing my mouth, I probably lipped off to somebody. But <laughs> this kid decided that he wasn't real happy with me. And conked me over the head with one of them big Tonka dump trucks. Nice. Landed me in the hospital. 
uh, I did not end up getting stitches for that head injury, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I did end up in the hospital. Just, it's a head wound, just pouring blood all over the place. And, <laughs> you know, my, my, uh, 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 they, they, they couldn't reach my, my stepfather at the time because he was down in the missile silos and they couldn't reach him and they had reached a emergency contact. Who came pick me up, took me to the hospital, and then he got a hold of my mom. And my mom came down and she said, when she walked in, said, uh, uh, I think my son's here. He was injured at the daycare. And the person, the person who greeted her or whatever said, Oh, yours is a kid who's bleeding all over the place. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, the 70s. Yes. <laughs> no filters. Right. That explains a few things, brother. I know. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I've had four concussions, so. Oh. So he doesn't uh, just lip off to all of us, Dick and William. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, 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 I saw him get at least one of those concussions. Yeah, when I got my, I gave one of those concussions. <laughs> You're gonna have to share that story someday, Ziggy. Oh, uh, it's a it's a real quick one. We were uh, we were we were at a Waffle House after a night of being at the bar, and uh-huh. uh, we uh, we we got real friendly with the staff there. And uh-huh. uh, somebody that was drunk decided to walk their check, and I decided I was going to be the hero of the day, and I went out after him and uh met him in the parking lot and and confronted him and he stepped in to swing at me but i wasn't watching where my where yeah. my step was and i stepped, Just stepped off back. the curb yeah i stepped back and stepped off the curb and landed on my back and smashed my head into the into the concrete Ouch. on las vegas trail <laughs> yeah, Las Vegas Trail. So uh, I ended up uh, with a concussion for for that one. So, oh my, trying to be the hero. Yeah, and honestly, it was actually great because the guy swung at him, and Jeffrey just kind of dodged out the way. If he had to stepped off the curb, it would have been beautiful. Because I'm running out the door when that happens, and I saw Jeffrey fall. I'm going to jump on the guy, and then I see that Jeffrey's not getting up. So I, I'm running, 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 and then I just turn around and go, "Oh shit." <laughs> I'm looking at Jeffrey, and the guy starts to jump, and then he realizes the same thing. He goes, oh, shit. I actually heard him say it, and then the cops show up. Yeah. Whoops. Yep. Carted him away. Yep. Carted him away. Yep. yep. Well, but at least he didn't get arrested Je- for, te- for Earth. Yeah. Technically, you know. Jeffrey, Jeffrey tripped. He didn't get hit, so they didn't arrest the guy for an assault. He did get arrested, however, for uh, for walking the check. Yeah. Good. So, see, you were the hero. Yeah. You just didn't have to hurt him to get that way. You hurt yourself. Right. <laughs> Back to Kenner Toys. Yes. Kenner so, Toys. Hasbro closed the Cincinnati offices of Kenner in 2000, and the Kenner, the Kenner product line were merged into Hasbro's. Now, at the height of Kenner, um, when they were in the Kroger building in Cincinnati, they had four floors rented out of that building. They had places where they could make the toys. Um, most of the actual manufacturing was actually going on at Taiwan, but they were putting them together downstairs on the loading docks. There was also a giant sandbox where they would take the figures and the toys and bury them in the sandbox and get people's kids to come over and play with them so they could tag them and take a look and see how well they, they wore down over time. Um, there have been several, uh, documentaries about this, uh, the toys that made us, which was put out by Netflix plus plastic galaxies. Uh, I have included both of those films in our YouTube playlist. You guys need to get out there and see that you really get a feel for what happened. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I've heard plastic galaxies is really, really good. I've, oh, it's uh, great. Well, it's, it's, it's in the YouTube playlist. You go check it out. I think, uh, I think two geeks and a microphone have, have mentioned plastic galaxies before. Plastic galaxies is incredible. Uh, so Kenner is this, you know, toy company. They've got like five, six percent, this little toy company of the market. And then George Lucas is trying to sell the Star Wars deal to everyone. Everybody turns him down. Bernie, uh, as a matter of fact, at the time when he's trying to shop this out in about 1976, 1977, um, he goes to the offices of Mego Toys in New York, which at that time controlled 
over half of the toy market. Mego was the biggest toy market in the world or in the United States in 1975. And we've done an episode on Mego. Yes. Um, give me a minute and I can find which episode it was. <laughs> it's going to take me a few minutes. So I got to scroll okay. through here. But, so yeah, they, uh, but they go into it, should go ahead they go and pause, into, go listen to it, and then come back. Yes. Okay, they're back. So they go down to talk to Marty, who is not in the office at the time, the guy that runs Mego. Kenner has a New York office right up the hall from where Mego is. And their head happened to be in that office that day. He never goes there. Um, so the Star Wars guys walk down down the hall to talk to him because they wouldn't Mego wouldn't make the deal. They go into the Kenner office and uh, they talk to Bernie Loomis and they show him some of the drawings. And Bernie Loomis is like, yeah, no, no, we can totally do this. So let's make a deal. And they make a handshake deal. Yeah, you had mentioned this in that episode, too. It's uh, yeah. episode 63, by the way. <laughs> episode 63. Thank you. Uh, so when they get back, they right they they start trying to figure out how they're going to do the toys. And Bernie Loomis is like, "We can't do just calendars and coloring books. We need to come up with action figures." So he had his team work round the clock over them. And they're like, "Okay, we need to set the, the we need to set the size of the action figure so we know how to work. So we need to know how big Luke is." And a decision made by Bernie Loomis, uh, he goes. That big. Luke is that big. Everything else should should span off around that. And the guy said, and I quote, Bernie Loomis takes his two sausage fingers, holds them about that far apart. I measured it out. It's three and three quarter inches. That became the standard for all action figures. That one encounter. Some, Me, of, the, you know, was, some of the original Star Wars uh, ones uh, that, that later changed had these very strange big heads yes on, on the on the original ones and then they changed yes. it later that made it look a lot more like a real head mm -hmm. the reason the original big heads look the way they did is the original temp pieces they used were the um the fisher price action people and they all had really big heads mm -hmm. and they they used bondo and stuff like that bits of plastic to to make those and cut them down. And that's what they used as their test track. That's what they designed their maquettes over. And then that's what they shipped off to Hong Kong to have them made and then sent back and they were manufactured here. So they eventually figured out and redesigned the heads on them. But on the first few in the production run, they just went, well, what the heck? Um, those were the original fat heads. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And what's amazing is they had this idea. They couldn't get production because Star Wars was released in May of 1977. Um, they couldn't get production up of the action figures by Christmas of 1977. So what they did, and this was Bernie Loomis's stroke of genius, they sold this action figure playset it, uh which was basically an empty box with certificates in it. You bought the box, you sent the certificates off, and in a couple of months, you got the action figures. Those were the original, I want to say, 12 action figures. Yes, yes, we're going to go with that. The original, someone's going to yell at me for this because because I could be off. I think Originally, right. 12, yeah, 12 action figures. You sent off these certificates, they sent them back, and and what you got in the box was actually a little stand that you could, you know, because they had the little holes in their feet. You could put them on the stand and the little stands would move. That is one of the most sought after things amongst these Star Wars toy collectors. See, and we've talked about this before, and, and it, I could swear that was wrong because I could swear that the Christmas immediately after star wars i got all of them but i yeah. guess it was the christmas after it was the christmas after christmas of 1978 they released everything okay. i didn't get any of the star wars figures from the original one because my folks were like we're not paying 15 bucks for an empty box you know i got i got all of them at that i guess that next christmas i got mm -hmm. all the characters uh that they had at the time yeah. which which i think you're right i think there was 12 
but I got, all, ones. I, got, yeah. I got all of them yeah. plus an X-Wing, a Land Speeder, and a TIE Fighter. Yeah, Vader TIE. Because you can no, get the Vader no. TIE before you get the other one. No, I I had the I had the, the, the Oh standard, yeah, the white the, TIE Fighter? I had the standard TIE, yeah. Okay. All I wanted was R2 D2. R2 D2. <laughs> you only wanted R2 D2? Yep. He, he was in was the girl. original 12. <laughs> Yeah, but my I remember my friend getting and his name was Boo, um, getting all of the the figurines in there. And of course, my mom was like, "Your parents like, you shame paying fifteen bucks for that." Yeah, but all I wanted was R two D two because I thought he was cute. Well, and the original R two D two, when you turned his head, he made a little clicking noise. Right. Yeah, it was just a little piece of plastic against a little piece of metal in there, but. It well, was a the, cool effect. Well, the original set had Luke, Han, <coughs> Leia, Chewie, R2, 3PO, Darth Vader, a Stormtrooper, Obi-Wan, a Jawa. In the Death Squad? They called them Death Squad originally, but I think they were just Death Star guys. Uh, yes. Did, was they, did they have one of those in the first set? I want to say that was in the first set. Maybe so, but so so I think you're right. I mean, I just named off ten. Yeah. So so yeah, it was probably. I think you're probably right. I think it was probably about twelve. And once once they did that, they were off to the races. And the next Christmas, they owned Christmas. And the Christmas after that, they owned Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the Christmas after that, they owned Christmas. In the in our uh, uh, in, in on, on our website, get a picture. Because I'd love, I'd, I'd love to see it. I just saw it on Facebook just the other day. Get a picture of the first Death Star playset they released. Oh, okay, I, I can had, do that. I had one of those. And Me it was too. Awesome. Me too. I loved that thing. I would love to take it apart. Yeah. Because you know, because you it had to, you had to take it apart when you when you were finished playing with it because it it was kind of tall. Mm -hmm. But also, the Death Star supposed to blow up, so that, that just kind of made sense. They really thought about this stuff when they were making. It. Yeah, it was four stories tall. You had a you had a you had a basement. Uh, or a, a bottom story, which had the trash compactor, which mm -hmm. was filled with little little foam pieces and a and a, and a trash compactor monster. Yep. Then the I next, remember that. Uh huh. Then the next floor had the control center. Mm -hmm. The next level was the bridge you could swing across. Yes. And then the top level was the uh, was the 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 gun that you yep. saw uh, part of the Death Star. Uh, that you'd see in the movie, and then it had an elevator that connected them all, and you could yep. raise the elevator up and down. It was just a really cool playset. Really great design toy. Really, oh, the, really great design the toy. The first level also had a trap door, which you could throw the yes the, the characters down into the trash compactor. Yes, into the trash compactor. It was awesome. Yes. It was so great. It was so great. And then there was a little top piece you could put on that you were supposed to be able to like park TIE fi fighters on, but you couldn't. In England, they had a completely different Death Star playset. Did you know that? No. Yes. Uh, they had, it was made by Palatoy, and it was mostly uh, cardboard with plastic pieces, um, but it was actually round. Um, and it was smaller than our Death Star playset, but all of the things that our Death Star playset lacked, mm -hmm. the Palatoy version had. And all the things the Palatoy version had or lacked, our Death Star had. So if you put them together, you actually had a complete Death Star playset. Well, and Kenner did uh, their own cardboard sets as well. I had yes. I had two of them. Um, no, I had, yeah, I had. Oh, I had the, the Jawa set? The Jawa and, set and the, and the Adat the Adat set. Yeah, were the exact same thing, just done in different colors. Yeah, and so you had the cardboard, which connected into a plastic base, which mm -hmm. uh, had pegs that you could stand the characters on, and had different things. And la later on, after Empire Strikes Back, they came out with a with a Dagobah a Dagobah playset, which yes. had uh, Yoda's home, and it had a had a swamp that the you could shove a character down into. Yes. Oh my god, I love the Dagon playset. And then of course I, I want to say the best playset they ever did was the Ewok Forest playset, which Kenner ended up using two or they had because they still had the molds. They ended up using it for Robin Hood when they made the Robin Hood characters. And I want to say they did like a Flintstones one.
it was also used for that. Interesting. Yeah, they used it like three times. Yeah, they went away from the cardboard and then they had actual plastic sets. Yes. I had a I had a Hoth set that was basically a trench that the that the rebels fought out of and oh yeah then the Dagobah play set uh that, that came later there was a uh, uh a droid builder play set you could get later oh, which God. was really cool love the droid building play set that was one of the best and they reproduced yeah. that for Jabba's droid area it was yeah. the same toy but in different colors but he still had all the pieces where you could put the little droids together and make little droids you can make a full R2D2 too yeah it was awesome. Um, and then in right after Empire Strikes Back, they kind of went all out with a, like a micro version where they just had little die cast characters. Mm -hmm. But the sets that they you, you bought them because you didn't just buy the little die cast characters. You bought the little sets that went with them. Oh, my God. They were so intricate and wonderful. But those didn't sell very well. I only knew one kid that really had a bunch of them because he preferred them because he liked the sets better. Um Everybody else wanted the three and three quarter action figures because you couldn't really do much with those little die cast figures. But the micro line were really, really awesome, but it kind of failed. So they quit doing it after about a year, year and a half. Okay. Yeah, it's some amazing sets. Um, and Kenner went on for a while. They they eventually came out after after Return of the Jedi came out. They did another series after after Return of the Jedi called The Power of the Force. Well, they went back and picked up characters that they hadn't put out. Mm -hmm. um, but the power, the original power of the force didn't do very well. So uh, they kind of closed the line. They boxed the line. Then they tried to do some other movies, uh, Robin right. Hood, back up Batman. real quick to back up real quick to star Wars. Cause something, <clears throat> something I meant to mention earlier. Another thing that, that Kenner did in a, um, in a partnership with either, jc penny or sears one of the two was sears. it wasn't sears that they had sears. exclusive things that you could only get through sears yes. uh one of those is the extremely rare boba fett where his missile launched which yeah um, that was never actually released to the public it was released you could it, it's out no there. no it was not those are all test models it right, that's never what I said. They're it. they're out there. They they yeah. they produced it. It just never got to the public. But they're yeah, out okay, there. You, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. get it because by the time they actually released it to the public, the 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 funny thing was it had the it had the missile that wouldn't launch out. Yeah, but there wouldn't was launch. A, there was a little divot in the backpack where the switch was. Yes, uh, that they yes. never fixed in the, in the production line. Um, they had that, and then they also had a. A imperial troop uh, carrier. Yes, um, I love the imperial troop carrier. Where you could sit carrier. a couple, cre a couple of characters in the front, and then you had mm -hmm. slots on the side, and then there was a, a storage thing in the back. I thought it was funny, and I loved it. They finally brought that into the movies. Yes, in they Rogue made it One. canon in Rogue yep. One. Yeah, they made it canon, and then you see it again in uh, uh, Mandalorian. Yes, because they actually steal one and, <laughs> and drive it off a mountain. Yes. <laughs> So, sorry, didn't mean to back up. Go ahead. No, 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 you're good. You're good. So, we go from Kenner, and we were just discussing this while you were gone. Uh, uh, Kenner eventually became, becomes a name brand for Hasbro in the early 90s. And then some of the things that Kenner produced, like the Star Wars and stuff, they would release it under the Kenner brand or or like Transformers. Like some of the weird transfer, like Beast Wars and stuff, they, they released them under the Kenner brand, even though they're still made by Hasbro. Um, Again, Kenner kind of struggled, um, and you would think with Tonka, because Tonka has always been a, a, a big toy company. You know, they've always done pretty well, but there was some mismanagement. Kenner steps in, or uh, Hasbro steps in and buys basically Kenner out um, about 1991. Um, they limp on for another 10 years or so, and they eventually close the the uh, the Cincinnati offices for Kenner. Um, but in the mid 1990s, they decided to start releasing Star Wars toys again, and this is when they release the uh, Power of the Force two set of action figures, which are highly sought after by some people and highly hated by others. Because what they did when they went back, they didn't use the same old molds. They used the same molds for the ships, but they used better plastic so they would last a little longer. Um, 
Plus the painting was a little better. But the molding for the characters, they were all real big and beefy and muscular. They kind of look like He-Man. Mm-hmm. I remember those. Yeah, Power of the Force 2. Those are kind of sought after. And then they started producing them again as the movies came out. And so there's all kinds of Star Wars movies now, and some of them with the Kenner brand on them. They've kind of revitalized that Kenner brand from Hasbro, especially what they call the classic collector's editions, where you've got some of these really, really great toys and action figures that you can buy again, even on the cards. They're they're beautiful. So I would I would definitely suggest people get out there and take a look. They also did some other things like Mr. Mouth. That was Kenner. That was a fun toy mm-hmm. in game. And I've 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 added some of those things to our uh, YouTube playlist where you can see some of the things that they did besides Star Wars, which is what they're most known for. But it's because they owned like 85% of the market. Mm-hmm with star wars and you know when it went away it kind of killed them because they were amping up uh they got taken out by gi joe shelly and will and i were just talking about uh they got taken out by gi joe by hasbro and by he-man from kenner or i mean mattel also mm-hmm. barbie and shelly shelly did you say while we were on air that uh that no, your mom wouldn't we buy you a yeah, we, yeah. Mom, mom would buy you a Ken. She would not buy me a Ken Barbie, but she bought me a GI Joe um, to go with my Barbies. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah. it was the it was the one that there was a hole in the back of his head, so that if you put your thumb on the back of his head, it looked like his eye was blinking and his head would turn, and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Cre- creepy. So, yeah, he was creepy. He was very creepy, Jeffrey. I had a GI Joe, <laughs> so it wasn't just for the boys. No. Now, truth well, be told, he was probably cheaper than a Ken Barbie doll, and that's probably why she bought me a GI Joe instead. <laughs> well, the thing that the I don't want to stray too far off topic, but, but the topic, but the thing the GI Joes had that Star Wars didn't is the GI Joes that came out were very art, <clears throat> were very articulate. Yes. Whereas the Star Wars ones weren't. Their their arms would move at the shoulder and their uh-huh. legs would go back and forth but the gi joe had joints on the knees on the elbows uh some the wrists hands, the ankles the wrists yes um and and so they were a lot more articulate mm-hmm. yeah yeah because the star well, wars kind of creepy though <laughs> yeah the, the star wars toys some of them weren't articulate at all you know there were a couple of them that you could only move the head on yeah um most of them you had two joints that they yeah you had uh, joint at the hip, joint at the hip, joint at the shoulder, joint at the shoulder, and the head, and that's it. And the head, right, right. That's it. That's all you got. I had, um, so, I had, I had so many Star Wars toys that my my little brother ripped the heads off. No, well, I used to rip the heads oh off because of you could, if you were careful, you could pop the head off and pop it on another character. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you had to take a Han Solo. You had to put him in in something that wouldn't break, like a little metal baking pan or something fill it with water and put it in the freezer so you could you know have him a carbonite carbonite yeah i thought you were gonna say you popped han solo's head off and put it on leia's body i did (laughs) that happened (laughs) that happened more than once until eventually the thing is once you do that it's a little socket it's fine but it's very very small connecting piece to the body so if you pop them off enough times you'll just break it Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can't put them back on. So yeah, quick tip, kids: don't pull the heads off your Star Wars uh, figures more than once or twice. You pop them on different bodies. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at vintage Star Wars toys, and on eBay, the Star Wars trilogy special edition 1996 Taco Bell set of six toys. It says uh-huh. it's rare for twenty bucks. But if you look at a vintage 1983 Star Wars ROTJ Oral B Jedi Masters three pack, that's yep. two hundred thirty five dollars. Yeah, well, those wow. three packs were hard to come by. Saved our toys, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, those a are hard vintage C three PO one hundred ninety nine dollars for a yeah. ceramic C three PO. Uh huh. That's some crazy. Of that stuff is not on card. <laughs> that's just. Loose figs. Mm-hmm. Loose figs can be really expensive, especially like Yak Face. That was the yeah. Back when I was doing the collecting and trading in this in Star Wars toys back in the 
late eighties, early nineties. That was the that was the one you could find. That and the Boba Fett with the rocket fire and thing, but you never could get that anyway. Right. Uh, I had a. They didn't. I also had a Darth Vader carrying case for my characters. Oh yeah, they had a Darth Vader carrying case. They had C-3PO. a C three PO. C three PO. I want to say they had another one too, but I don't. I just remember the Darth Vader and the C three PO. Yeah, I think one. you may be right. Yeah, because it was the head of Darth Vader and the head of C three PO. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? You could also buy like a little aftermarket case that that had the little stands. I used to mix um, them. I used to mix and match all my toys when I when I oh, played yeah. with them too. Just my, oh, yeah. my imagination would run would run wild. When I had that Death Star, I also mm-hmm. had a uh, uh, a giant Shogun warrior that I oh yeah have attacked the Death Star because he was as tall as the Death Star. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Shogun warrior attacked the Death Star, and then of course, uh, instead of it being Darth Vader as the the chief bad guy, you could have. Uh, Maximilian the robot from uh, the Black right. Hole. I had one of those. <laughs> who, who, who was the maker of the Black Hole toys? Um, was it Kenner? I can tell. Was that Kenner? You know, as well? Give me just. I think. Let me, let me check. Black Hole toy. Because we had t- we have mentioned it before, but I don't remember yeah. who did it. Because we had talked about the Buck Rogers toys. Um, because I had I had some Buck Rogers. I also you had get some, some Black Hole. You get you can get some brand new mm. reaction ones. Interesting. Yeah, I love reaction. Then I had GI Joe. I had Chris Star. Uh, I love Chris Star. Yeah, I did too. I oh, I needed uh, retraction. That was done by the Rimco toy company. I said it was somebody else. Rimco made Chris Star. Mm. Mm. And did you? Man, I don't. I don't remember what company you said Chris Starr was part of it. Yeah, we I, I don't. I, I, I know I, when I heard it, I was like, that's we wrong. We had it in our show. So, uh, Migo. Migo made Black Hole. Migo made Black Hole. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's basically it for Kenner Toys other than get out there and check out Plastic Galaxy Galaxies. It's fascinating. Uh, it is on our YouTube playlist. Um. Get out there, get some toys, set them up. They're cool looking. Again, not as many points of articulation as the GI Joes, but they're still pretty cool looking. GI Joe also didn't have, you know, reese. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, I gave away the rest of what I had for my Star Wars stuff to to my nephews. Of course, you did. I had. Uh, they were all in various different. Sh- shapes of uh of, of wear and tear so <clears throat> but uh i wish i still had some of them but uh mm-hmm. but yeah, i had i had quite the collection of yes. star wars toys when i was when i was growing up i had tons i mean every, you know when new stuff would come out and especially the new movies and whatnot you would get new toys mm-hmm. uh, loved it absolutely loved it. i had a millennium falcon uh i had an ad ad i had a snow speeder um ATST. I didn't. I never had an ATST. I want to say I didn't have an ATST when I was playing with them, but I did in my mid to early to mid teens. I was not so much playing with them, but I was kind of collecting them just because mm-hmm. I thought they looked cool. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Um, and I had an ATST just kind of sitting on a shelf because it just it, it got a cool figure just sitting there. I had a weird fascination with dismantling all the uh, all the vehicles and whatnot. I mean, I I had a screwdriver set and I would dismantle them because I wanted to see how they worked. Yes, they like you need to know how yeah what stuff was inside. But yeah, that's about it for the Kenner toys. Thanks for going down that trip with me. Um, awesome. We kind of nerded out on that. Thank you, Shelly. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you for taking us down that journey. Um. With that, we will step over to the murdery side of the house. Murder. Dun, dun, dun. For today, I got my information off Medium, Wikipedia, CBS News, Salon, and AP News. And this is the slaying of the Harvey family. The Harvey family. Sure. So it was New Year's Day 2006. And it was going to be a bit be a busy one for social butterflies Brian Harvey, his wife Catherine, and their daughters Stella and Ruby, who were nine and four respectively. <clears throat> they had plans to host a, host a lunchtime barbecue for friends and family, and they had gotten up bright and early to make preparations for the festivities to come. 
49 year old Brian was a local celebrity, and you may know this, who had tasted fame in the 1980s as the singer songwriter for the underground indie brand, indie band House of Freaks. Really? Yep. Though he and his musical partner, Johnny uh, Hot, had gone their separate ways professionally in the 90s, they had remained close friends. A dedicated mu- musician through and through, Brian had taken the stage at a New, York, New Year's Eve show on what would turn out to be the last night of his life. Catherine, age 39, was successful in her own right as the co-owner of a popular toy store called Word of, World of Mirth. Uh, she was a pillar of the community, and she was an artist at heart who lent her talents wherever they were needed. On that fateful Sunday morning, Brian had stepped out of their home in the trendy Woodland area, uh, Heights area of Richmond, Virginia, to retrieve the newspaper. As he looked through the front page, he had absentmindedly gone, absentmindedly gone back inside without locking the door. Since they lived in a relatively safe neighborhood, this oversight wouldn't normally have caused for concern. However, on this day, unbeknownst to him, a pair of opportunistic predators were lurking nearby. Catherine was in the kitchen baking cookies for the guests who would be arriving in a few hours when she heard voices in the living room. And thinking that someone had shown up ahead of schedule, she went to greet them. To her horror, instead of being met with familiar faces, she found herself staring at two men she had never seen before. In the harrowing moments that followed, Brian, Catherine, and little Ruby were herded downstairs to the basement playroom. Stella, who had spent the previous night at a slumber party, was not yet among them. But once the family was confined to the small space, the intruders bound them with electrical cords and packing tape. They were in the process of ransacking the house when they heard someone knocking on the front door. The man who seemed to be in charge untied Catherine and told her to get rid of whoever was at the door. But before allowing her to leave, he warned her that if she asked for help or tried to make a run for it, he would kill her daughter and husband. Since they were expecting Stella to be dropped off at any time, Catherine found herself stuck between a rock and a hard place. If she answered, she would be putting her daughter in the same predicament the rest of the family was facing. But if she ignored the persistent knocking, she uh, she risked drawing the ire of the men who clearly had the upper hand. Ultimately, she decided that the best option was to cooperate, and with that, she opened the door. Before she knew it, Stella had bounded past her and headed straight for the playroom where the family spent most of their time. Mm -hmm. When her daughter's friend attempted to follow suit, an ashen-faced Catherine had blocked her path. The girl's mother, Kirsten Perkinson, would later say that she had been taken aback by the action, which had been completely out of character. When she asked if everything was okay, the normally exuberant Catherine had responded she wasn't feeling well before abruptly ending the conversation and closing the door. <clears throat> when she returned to the basement, Catherine saw that a terrified Stella was now tied up alongside the rest of the family. But once everyone was sur- securely restrained, all hell broke loose. The man, the, Without warning, the man who had been calling the shots had produced a knife he had taken from the Harvey's kitchen and started methodically slicing their throats, including those of the little girls. After complaining to his partner in crime that they were refusing to die, he grabbed a, ha- a claw hammer and bashed them over the head till they stopped moving. Jesus. You're evil. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. After removing the wedding ring from Catherine Harvey's finger, the killers had set the room on uh, on fire to cover up the evidence of their despicable deeds. Gray and Danbridge, uh, who were these guys' names, tipped over an art easel in the Harvey family's basement, poured wine on top of it, and lit the easel on fire in an attempt to destroy the crime scene. The wine's not flammable. Uh, they they tried to do it that way. It was, yeah. it was the easel that really caught fire, though. Yeah. <sighs> Um, as they fled the house, they helped themselves to a DVD player and, and the plate of freshly baked cookies that sat cooling on the kitchen counter. A wedding ring, cookies, and a DVD, and a DVD player. player. This wow. wasn't for this wasn't for theft. Uh, I, I would agree with you on that. Yeah, this wasn't for theft. Um, a short time later, Johnny Hot arrived for the celebratory get together, and when he opened the door, a cloud of smoke came billowing out. Overcome by the acrid stench of something burning, he had immediately phoned 911. And when first responders made their way inside, they discovered four bodies still intact in the smoldering basement. Police officers and paramedics who had seen the worst of humankind were said to have found the grisly scene so disturbing that some of them openly cried. 
Ugh. The knowledge that the parents had been forced to watch their children be, uh, being butchered and vice versa had simply been too much for them to bear. Their autopsies revealed that Brian and Catherine had died as a result of blunt force trauma to the head. Stella had succumbed to a combination of blunt force trauma and smoke inhalation. And these findings indicated that despite her horrific in injuries, she was still alive when the fire had started. Oh, my God. Awful. Four-year-old Ruby had died from stab wounds to her neck and back. Uh, though an investigation of the killings was launched right away, evidence was scant. But knowing that criminals like to talk, they reached out to the public for help. In the days that followed, police gathered evidence. Local media expressed shock and disbelief, and spontaneous shrines of cards, candles, and other mementos accumulated outside the house in Catherine's shop. At a packed memorial at the local Bird movie theater, uh, musician friends, uh, numb with grief, played a tearful version of George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. It was a dreadful end of the holiday season and a chilling start to the new year. But the violence wasn't over. Within days of the tragedy, another family was found slain in a different part of town. And further evidence of, of a binge of assault and murder so brutal and unfocused it would haunt the city for years to come. On January 6th, a woman named Latoya Pauly called police and asked them to perform a welfare check on her friend Ashley Baskerville. She explained she was worried because the girl's boyfriend and his uncle were the only ones uh, who had killed. Uh, she explained that the, that the girl's boyfriend and his uncle were the ones who had killed the Harvey family. She then dropped the bombshell that they had hid, hidden evidence of their crimes at her home. And again, these men, these men's names were Ray, Ray Danbridge and Ricky Gray. After verifying Latoya's story, officers paid a visit to, to the house that 21-year-old Ashley shared with her mother, Mary Baskerville Tucker, and her father, Percy L. Tucker. Upon entering the residence, they discovered that all three had been butchered in much the same manner as the Harveys. Bound with duct tape, which had also been wrapped around their heads, Mary and Percy L. bore deep gashes to their necks, and a sock had also been shoved down Percy L.'s throat. Ashley was found to have been suffocated with a plastic bag. Oh, my gosh. Suspecting they were dealing with a pair of thrill killers, law enforcement agencies from all over the region worked together to find them before they could strike again. And after tracing their movements back to their home state of Pennsylvania, Gray and Danbridge were apprehended in Philadelphia on January 7th. During his interrogation, 29-year-old Danbridge had claimed that the killings had been his uncle's idea and he had simply done as he was told. When confronted with these damning allegations, Gray, who was also 29, had readily confessed to murdering the Harveys and assisting in those of Ashley and her parents. He then proceeded to provide a detailed three-page confession in which he described using a kitchen knife and claw hammer to kill the Harveys, stating, quote, I don't believe sorry is strong enough. None of this was necessary. No shit. Right. While these matter-of-fact admissions were enough to make anyone's head spin, as it turned out, he was only getting started. Of his own accord, Gray also admitted to having beaten his wife Treva to death in 2005 while Danbridge held her down. Huh. Shockingly, even though her brutalized body had been found buried in a shallow grave, authorities ruled out foul, ruled out foul play. Somebody needs to hold him down and beat him with a hot claw hammer. Oh, shit. Uh, no, I'm mad about Barty Fife, who found someone beaten and buried in a shallow grave and said there was no foul play. Yeah, no kidding. No shit. Lazy. Well, and 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 Trevor's husband, who's well known to law enforcement, had not been a suspect in her death. According to Trevor's parents, the Grays fought bitterly and claw marks were seen on Ricky's forearms the day Trevor's body was found. Both men, however, were interviewed by Washington police, but never as suspects. Treva's mother, Marna Squires, alleged that the police assumed Treva had died of a drug overdose and were lax in investigating her death. Agreed. Gray then also confessed to attacking 26-year-old Ryan Carey as he was leaving his parents' house on New Year's Eve. Uh, Ryan would spend the next two weeks in a coma, and he also permanently lost the use of his right arm. Apparently, just for fun, he and Danbridge had jumped Carey as he walked to his car, stabbing him repeatedly and beating him within an inch of his life. 
When asked to give details of the murders, Gray had described slitting the throats of the Harveys and their children without the slightest hint of reflection or emotion. As for the Baskerville Tuckers, he claimed that the whole thing had been set up, had been a setup that got out of hand. According to him, Ashley had been a willing participant up to that point. She had even sat in the car and acted as a lookout while they killed the Harvey family. In need of some quick cash, the trio had come up with a scheme to rob Perciel, who was a forklift operator who was known to keep large sums of money in the house. Ashley, believing that her mother and stepfather would be more apt to cooperate if they feared that their life was in danger, had agreed to play the role of a victim. Once Gray and Danbridge had the family incapacitated, they decided to go ahead and kill everyone, including Ashley. She had become a third wheel who had long since worn out her welcome, and they agreed the time had come to remove their cohort from the equation. When her body was found, officers noted that she was wearing Catherine Harvey's one-of-a-kind wedding ring. Wow. Wow. I hope they gave those bastards the death penalty. Well, on February 9th, 2006, Ricky Gray was charged with five counts of capital murder, uh, one charge for killing more than once in a three-year period, one charge for committing more than one killing in a single act, one charge for killing in commission of a robbery, and two charges for killing a child under 14 years of age. Um, Gray showed little emotion during his trial until his mother testified during its penalty phase, uh, phase. Uh, she was frail and in tears, and she described a childhood of neglect and abuse for her son, much mocked by some observers of media, while holding, holding a photo of him as a boy dressed in a sailor suit, and Gray wept during the testimony. These are serial killers. They killed yep. multiple, and they were mm-hmm. abused. If you don't want to raise a serial killer, don't beat Don't your kids. beat your kids. Urgh. We say it time and time again. Don't beat your kids. We don't. The society does not need more serial killers. We just no. don't. No. Quit, quit, no. Bre- quit breeding them. Yes. Quit making them. Um, in another proceeding, uh, Ray Danbridge was ind- indicted on three counts of murder for his role in the Baskerville Tucker uh, slayings. And contrary to their earlier confessions, both men entered pleas of not guilty. Uh, following a six month trial, a jury declared Gray guilty on all counts. He was sentenced to life for life in prison for the murders of Kat, Brian and Catherine Harvey, but as a punishment, uh, well, but as a punishment for taking the lives of Stella and Ruby, the court determined that nothing short of death would suffice. Good. Uh, in September, sorry, not sorry. No, that's <laughs> fine. In September of 2006, after learning the verdict in his uncle's case, Danbridge uh, accepted a plea deal in order to avoid the death penalty, and he will spend the rest of his life behind bars without possibility of parole. In December of 2006, Culpeper County also indicted Gray for the murder of Cheryl Warner, a 37-year-old legal secretary and mother of three who was found shot and hanged by an electrical cord in her basement of her burning house in the town of Riva. Gray pleaded not guilty, uh, and on June 4, 2008, the charge was suspended due to contradictory evidence. Uh, Ricky Gray's legal team filed numerous appeals over the next nine years, most of which uh, hinged on the argument that their client client suffered from a diminished capacity as a result of an abusive childhood, as well as PCP use during the commission of the crimes. Uh, His case would make it all the way to the Supreme Court, where it was summarily shot down. On January 18, 2017, with all of his appeals exhausted, Gray was executed by lethal injection at the Greensville Correctional Center. The 39-year-old inmate was put to death with the sed- sedative mitazolam, followed by rocuronium bromide uh, to halt the breathing and potassium chloride, which stops the heart. Uh, Gray showed no emotion as he was walked in the execution chamber wearing blue jeans and handcuffs, and when asked if he had any final words, Gray responded, nope. Uh, Special place in hell for people like him. Yes, there are. So the reason I brought up the the what they specifically used, Virginia officials said in advance that they planned to use the mitazolam and potassium chloride from a compounding pharmacy whose identity is secret under a new state law. Mm-hmm. Uh, Virginia would be the first state to use the compounded uh, uh, the, the compound, according to Gray's attorneys. And Gray's attorney had challenged the state's lethal injection plan, saying that even a firing squad would be more humane. 
Uh, Mata Zolam has uh, come under fire after several problematic executions in other states, which critics arguing that it causes inmates to suffer a painful death because it cannot reliably render them unconscious. What about their victims suffering? Thank you. That's where I kind of go on that. Because, uh, okay, because if, if we can't do that. Cruel and unusual we, punishment. I know. We are a system of laws, not a system of men. The reason our, our legal system has trouble is people have a hard time separating those two things. They do. and we're It also is the not- rule of law, not the rule of land. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Everybody has to be treated the same way under the law. They do. Otherwise, it doesn't. It doesn't affect it doesn't apply to all of us. They do. And I agree with you, but I also agree on Shelley's statement. I I yep. I Oh yeah. I don't know. Our I'm emotions not saying are that. putting in on that. I yeah. think I, I think they should suffer some too. Yeah. How you so, kill a so put them, in, put, put them in general pop and let them know what they did. I guarantee you it's gonna be I worse. agree. I it's agree. gonna be a lot worse. <laughs> and you don't have to do that. That's not state sanctioned. It's not. Mm-hmm. And the state can wash its hands. Because isn't, even it, if they, isn't it odd? Even if they don't kill them, they're not going to have a good time. No. And it's it's odd that there is a code amongst prisoners, you know, all these these hardened criminals that do all this, this stuff, breaking the law and that. But when they hear that somebody hurt a child or even a woman, then that code kicks in and they tend to make that person's life hell. So, yeah, I would say they should have put him in general pop and whispered yeah. a few things to people. That's, yeah. you know, I sound well, like I, a, a heartless no, person. No, no, no. It's, 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 that's the thing. It's called the when you get into prison, it's they call it presenting your paperwork. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you do that. You have to Well, when you're in the yard because of it's everybody knows. So you don't even have to whisper nothing. It's public knowledge when they get there. Yeah. Yep. It's, but the it's, problem with death yeah. row is we spend so much money on death row. It's like you can make the problem go away itself, and then you don't have to stay state sanctioned killing anyone because that's a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. That's a slippery oh, slope. Yeah. Right? And, well, and, and honestly, we only do that for revenge. We don't do that for any other reason. It's not. It's not to to make it stop happening because it doesn't. Um. It's, it's it not is, to yeah. yeah it's not to to secure uh, help for the victims because it doesn't uh, it is basically for revenge and I don't think we should do it I, I think the best way to go about it is put them into the general pop and tell them what they did then the problem solves itself well it's and a you guys live in the problem. state that has it on the on the fast track like you know in Arizona and I in I, Jeffrey I don't know if it's the same compound that you know they've been fighting in all these different states because sometimes it doesn't work right and it's the inhumane yeah. treatment but um, you know it's also I mean, expensive it's, yeah it's the you killed somebody we're going to kill you back and I find myself conflicted on that because like this story this guy killed a, you know a toddler yeah. And and granted, anybody that could do that and could torture somebody and kill them cannot be in their right mind. Right. But they also can't function in society. And and you know, um, I I'll admit, emotion and anger kicks in yeah. for the victim that you're like you're wanting them. You're like you want them to suffer. And you're right, Ziggy. It's a revenge thing. Mm-hmm. And we sh- we can't do that. We can't state sanction that. It's just not. It's not right. It's not that's not who we are as a people. But honestly, the best thing to do is stop making these people in the first place. Well, sure. <laughs> and that's why there's, there's lots of studies that go on uh, about people that 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 do these thrill kills. They kill, you know, they they study yeah. serial killers. They, they, they study murderers. Uh, we've talked about the McDonald triad before. That yeah. is a theory, not a proven fact. Uh, right. But it seems to hold true so many times. Oh yeah, that you know, abuse is is the big thing. You and, you and nine time times out of end. ten, poverty is a factor too. Sometimes, yeah. So then yeah. you think about this. You know, you're seeing all of these school shootings, and we just had it where the mother of a child that got a hold of a gun and did a, a mass shooting has been convicted of manslaughter. Uh-huh. So if we find the parents of these serial killers abused and caused the mental illness 
do we then start going after them? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, that I, will prevent the problem. I think there's you a case. I think there's a case for that. Child abuse is illegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can go to jail for it, yeah. and it, but the problem is, I'm relatively certain. I, I have to look statute it up. Statute of limitations. I bet you there's a statute of limitations on it. There's not. And a there should not limita- be. There's not a statute of limitations on murder. No, there's right. not. I think there should not be a statute of limitations on child abuse either. Nope. I agree. I think I think child abuse, and you know, some people are probably going to get angry with this statement, but I think child abuse is just as heinous as murder. How do you look? at an innocent child and think that it is okay to beat them or, you know, just mentally abuse them or sexually abuse them. It's disgusting. And it, you know, and and there's something wrong with that person because, you know, as as y'all know, the studies go fact that it's a chain. They were probably abused themselves and that's how they were raised. So why are we we going to break the chain? We have to break the chain because all you're going to do is you're going to going after these people to stop it. So it breaks. You're gonna make you're either gonna make another abuser, you're gonna make someone who's weird inside the rest of their lives, you're gonna make a serial killer, you're gonna do this. We just need to quit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if we if we took away the uh, statute of limitations on child abuse, that might help a lot of this problem. Mm-hmm. It takes some time for it to catch up to us. Yeah. 10, 15, well, maybe 20 years. Admitting that they were abused and that yeah. kind of thing. Because you know, there's a fear factor in there. The the yeah. abused either become victimizers or victims themselves yes and so for them to come out and say i was abused and mm-hmm. i want to press charges against this person yep. um you know it'd be hard to do but but i agree i don't think there should be a statute of limitations on it it doesn't make it any less wrong yeah and why do we have statute of limitations on and, all this and that's where it comes into the problem too because you've just hit on it so years later the abuse the abusee decides to go after the abuser in the legal system mm-hmm. the problem is going to be proving it proving it mm-hmm. yeah you would have to have physical evidence which may or may not exist eyewitness or, or you would have to have a reliable eyewitness who is willing to testify about yep. it, if there is an eyewitness, because sometimes abusers are very good at hiding what they do. True. Um, and so, and so that's kind of the kind of the hard part about that whole thing. Wow. If there wasn't a statute of limitations, can you prove it? Because well, we re- we really went down a road on this one. <laughs> no, we really, well we did, but it but it but I mean it goes down into it because we, as we talk about these yeah. these type of killers who there is signs of abuse in their history. I mean, that's how we got here. Um, right. It, it's, 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 it's a very hard thing that you would be able to do years later um, is, is prove it. Because if there's no witness, there's no obvious physical damage to that person. And even if there is, you've got to be able to prove that damage, that that damage came from the abuse. Um, it would be awfully hard to prosecute because you have to somebody in order for someone to be prosecuted in criminal, it, it, the 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 evidence the 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 jury has to find it beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes, it and does, that's, and that's difficult. If you go to civil court, however, and sue that person, it's much easier because in civil court, all you have to do is prove uh, a, a preponderance of evidence. Yes, it's a much easier path civilly and criminally yes Mm -hmm. uh beyond beyond preponderance of evidence that's what it is yes but um anyway to finish out our story um uh gray's attorneys had asked the supreme court to put execution plans on hold so they could pursue a lethal injection challenge but the supreme court denied it without explanation uh dan bridge is currently incarcerated at the sussex two state prison and in Richmond's uh, Forest Hill Park, there's a granite monument that marks the entrance to a footbridge dedicated to the memory of the Harvey family who had spent many joyous days at the site before their lives were so tragically cut short. There's a bronze plaque depicting their smiling faces as acts of reminder, uh, acts as a reminder of happier times before an evil they hadn't known existed walked through their door, decimating everything in its path. The Brian and Catherine Harvey Family Memorial Endowment has been created uh, to provide music, visual art, performing arts in Richmond, the Richmond area, which may include but is not limited to educational scholarships. 
Uh, there's an annual event, Ruby's Run, which has been organized to raise money in Ruby Harvey's name for a scholarship oh. fund at Ruby's Preschool, uh, the Second mm. Presbyterian Child Care Center in downtown Richmond. And in June of 2006, the William Fox Elementary School in Richmond, where Stella Harvey attended school, dedicated its new children's garden to the memory of Stella Harvey. Oh. And that's the story of the slaying of the Harvey family. Well, so, thank you for among that, a, sir. Among others. Yeah. Among others. Among many others. Yeah. Wow. It, yep. So, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't generally give good stories. Yeah, <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's because you're a Darth Vader nerd and you step over to the dark side, Jeffrey. I know. <laughs> I know I am. You know, I was, uh, I, 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 I was. I was uh, golfing uh, last week, and Chelsea was with me. And we have a we have a little Bluetooth speaker that we've got attached to the cart, <laughs> and I've got a golf a golf music list that I put together, and it's got I all know what's coming. All, yeah, it's got all kinds of things in it. Well, the Imperial March came on, and she immediately switched it over to the next song, and I just shot a look over to her, and I said, "How dare you!" How dare you? <laughs> she said, I can't play golf to the Imperial March. And I said, You play golf to the inner sandman. <laughs> I find your lack of oh my god, I can't remember the line. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> yes. The yeah. sarcasm is strong with this one. Yes. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, so I'd like to thank my sister Shelly for joining us. Really appreciate you joining us on the show. You're welcome back anytime. Thanks for having anyway. me. Well, you give me some warning and I'll get camera ready next time. You bet. <laughs> and I'm glad Will was able to join us. It's been a long time since we have uh, done it in person. And Will mm -hmm. sit, generally sits behind the scenes and does such good work on all of our editing uh, producing the show, everything like that. We appreciate each and everything that Will does for us, has done since the very beginning. Uh, it was Will's idea for this show in the first place. Yes, it was. Um, so, you know, we, we, we thank him and I'm glad he got to join today. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a welcome treat since he's usually behind the scenes. Yeah, well, and Will, I'm kind of proud of you because, you know, just because I know you're and Jeffrey and Ziggy's history, you didn't pick on them once. <laughs> Uh, he did in a little bit at the beginning. Yeah. He's, he's, well, I wasn't there yet, but he's been, <laughs> he's been really quiet and hasn't picked on Jeffrey once. And is, is and he still Jeffrey on? Jeffrey actually behaved. I don't know. He might have fallen asleep. Will you still there? <laughs> Hello? I, I think he fell off. <laughs> oh no. Whoops. <laughs> That's did. why he wasn't picking on you guys. <laughs> I guess so. I, I, I guess we put him to sleep. That's funny. That's very, very <laughs> funny. Well, as always, you can uh, that that takes us to the end of another recording week. You can find our more information about us on nerderymurdery.com. That's our website, our hub for everything we talk about. We put links to the episode of the topics we discuss as well as pictures that relate to what we talked about. Uh, do check that out there. And you can also find the link to our YouTube page, which Zig so often updates. Yes, we, we've got the YouTube page with uh, videos and stuff about the stuff we talk about, uh, as well as uh, uh, things we think are funny. And we like. uh, and <laughs> Zig has also started putting our playlists of the music we've talked about on Spotify, oh, yeah. so check those out as well. Is it a, yeah. is it a Nerdery Murdery channel? Uh, it is not a Nerdery Murdery channel. It, okay. it is... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to link all that stuff to. And if, if I got to remake them, I can remake them. But it is, I made it a public view, and they're all titled nerdery and murdery ep whatever i, I think it, or, or if it's exclusive it's nerdery and murdery x whatever the exclusive num number is and i think we had one bonus so it was b1 but yeah you just type in nerdery and murdery and you'll pull them all up. okay and let's not forget to mention the great facebook videos that zig puts on to promote the the podcast oh yes, yes. yes. that take you way back in time you're welcome oh yeah i like those <laughs> they're, they're great they're yeah, great that's great stuff too he does a lot of good work there um also on our website you can find the link to our merchandise page or if you wish to show off your nerdy murdy fandom please do consider purchasing something from there 
along with our Patreon. Our patrons help us with the costs that are associated with the show. It does cost to keep us on the air, uh, produce our website, uh, our uploads, everything like that. It's not free, and those uh, that those donations do not go to our Lamborghinis we don't have, our vacations we don't take, and our houses we don't live in. That's right. <laughs> please and thank you. Please and thank you. Last but not least, don't forget to leave a five-star review wherever you can. It really helps us and helps others find our topics that we talk about. So with that, I have been Zig with your nerdery. And I'm Jeffrey with your murdering. Kids music. Music.